Guys, have you heard of the physical therapy specialty called hippo therapy? Nah, not like hippopotamuses. Hippo, in other words, horse therapy. So hippo therapy, horse therapy. Oh, guys, you're gonna love this interview video because I was able to interview one of my classmates, alma mater, Azusa Pacific University, Jen, who is working at a facility where they utilize hippo therapy to help individuals, young adolescents, pediatrics, and adults, and help them improve their life and their functions on everyday tasks. Now, I know you're wondering, what? How do you utilize a horse as therapy and help them to improve their function? Ho oh, ho! Guys, you are in a treat for this interview video because there is gonna be so much value. If you love horses and you love physical therapy and you wanna merge them together, then you're gonna love this interview video. his pelvis is walking. So now we're going to watch the rider and the horse walk away from us. As the horse and rider are walking, notice first the rider's pelvis as it moves three-dimensionally. Forward and back, a little rotation, and a little side to side. Also compare that with the horse's pelvis. It's also moving front and back, side to side, and a little rotation. Next, we're going to mount the rider so you can compare the movement as the rider sits astride the horse. Now we have the rider mounted astride the horse. Let your eyes look at the movement. Notice how her pelvis swings side to side, a little front and back, and has rotation. Now compare the same movement to the horse's pelvis. There's no piece of therapy equipment that can mimic the same three-dimensional movement. This three-dimensional movement is the same movement shown when the rider is walking on the ground. So essentially, as the rider sits on the horse, she's getting the same three-dimensional movement as a person walking on the ground. And I also want to add that I'm going to be starting a short limited series on the different specialties in physical therapy. Woo, baby! If you guys are excited for this series on the different fields such as orthopedics, neuro, pediatrics, cardiopulmonary, and so much more, please give this video a like and comment below which topic or which specialty do you want to learn more of? Because there are a huge variety of topics that we can get into and I want to cover all of them if I can. Also, I need some help from you guys. If you know someone who is working in that particular field right now, whether you know them on Facebook or Instagram, please comment below so I can reach out to them and interview them as well. I think it's one level of value that I talk about it and give you some general information, but I think it's a higher level of value if you can get the insight from a working PT in that specific field. So please, let me know and so that I can reach out to them. And that's what's brewing in the lab for this channel for what's coming up in 2021, but also many other videos related to the physical therapy journey, kinesiology journey, and so much more. Guys, if you're new here, my name is Dr. Lifford Change, Justin Lee, physical therapist. And this channel has videos on everything related to the physical therapy journey from tips and strategies to get you into and accepted into PT school, strategies on how to survive PT school, because you know it is a lot, and insight as a working physical therapist. You'll also find videos on different ways to help yourself and rehab yourself if you have some kinds of injuries or aches and pains like a stiff neck, hurting low back, and so much more. So if any of that resonates with you, feel free to subscribe and hit those notifications. All right, guys, I am so excited to start this interview video with Jen. You guys are gonna learn so much about horses, 
horses and physical therapy, hippo therapy. <laughs> Let's get into this interview. Lego. All right, all right. Hello, hello. We got Jen in the house. What's up, Jen? Say Hi, hello guys. to everybody. Yay! <laughs> So guys, those of you who don't know, Jen was my classmate at APU. She graduated with me, and we have had such a great time together, struggled together, cried together, had so many highs and lows together. But here we are today. We're both working as physical therapists today in the midst of COVID-19. What a blessing. And uh, I just wanted to get her on today's uh, interview because she is in a very specific field in physical therapy, and I'm going to let her take the floor here in just a little bit, uh, but she is involved in what's called hippo therapy. Now, it is not using hippos uh, for physical therapy, but hippo is another word for horses. So we utilize horses for physical therapy. So this is going to be great. Uh, I'm going to just let Jen introduce herself, and then we'll get started with this interview. So like Justin said, we were in school together, which was tons of fun, super challenging. And um, since then we've stayed in touch. And I started my career at the Shea Center in March, working as a physical therapist, utilizing hippotherapy as a treatment tool. So I'm just really excited to be here to talk about that with you guys. Cause when our class went to go learn about this specialty, I was really shocked by how many people had never heard of it, but it's really awesome so much fun and super effective. So I'm really excited to share it today. Thanks, Justin. You're welcome. Okay, so let's just kind of get into it first. Uh, before we get into more specifics, I think it's super great that you just share your story and just kind of tell us a little bit on why you chose physical therapy over other professions. So in that aspect, I guess I was really lucky. I actually found out about hippotherapy from a family friend who I was leasing a horse from when I was 13. And when I learned about the opportunity to work with people, help people, work with animals, and be part of the medical field, I was just enthralled. I was completely consumed by it. And honestly, since that day, I can't remember ever wanting to do anything else with my life. And that passion and guidance and just dedication has really been one of my strengths and one of my blessings to get me to where I am today. So hippotherapy, wow. yeah, <laughs> yeah. physical therapy, and here we are. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Wait, so you learned about it when you were 13 years old, and you, you knew, and then since we had a connection with our program, I bet you were super stoked when we actually went. I never knew that. Yeah, yeah. So when I, um, you know, the road to PT is pretty long, and along the way, I fell in love with PT, thank goodness. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and, um, you know, was just happy working in any environment. I loved inpatient, outpatient, neuro. At the end of the day, I didn't really care what I went, where I went, but I found out that our school, Azusa Pacific, had the opportunity for me to do one of my clinical rotations at the Shea Center doing physical ah. therapy. So the second I found out about that, I was like, yes, please, where do I sign? <laughs> and, uh, yeah, that was huge. That wow. definitely helped a lot. Yeah, what a connection. I mean, I mean, when we went into it in school, it was just like an introduction. I was like, what is hippotherapy? Like, I don't understand. And when we got to learn a little bit more about it, I was like, wow, this is an actual thing. And I can really see how it works, you know? Yeah. So I'm going to let you take the floor on that and just kind of dive into like, what is hippotherapy? Why does it work? How does it work? How do you utilize it to uh, promote treatment and different types of things? So yeah, why don't you share what that's about? Yeah, so hippotherapy is actually considered to be a treatment tool that physical therapists, occupational therapists, and speech language pathologists will use as part of their treatment plan with clinical-based, or I'm sorry, research-based evidence in order to treat clients' functional goals. So in hippotherapy, the horse's movement is purposefully changed by the therapist to provide neuromotor and sensory input and promote those functional outcomes. Um, it's really cool. So basically, the horse is used as a treatment tool, similar to like we would use a Swiss ball or a free motion machine. And hippotherapy yeah. is appropriate for adults and children with all different kinds of diagnoses. The way it works is the horse's three-dimensional movement of their pelvis closely mimics that of the human pelvis when walking. So when the rider is riding, they receive rhythmic, consistent, and predictable neuromotor input. The horse actually walks at an average rate of about 100 steps per minute. 
So in a 35 minute session, the horse can give the rider up to 3,500 inputs. Whoa. Which allows them to work on balance, postural control, um, sensory regulation, all different kinds of things. So it's really complex and really cool and, and, and that it can't be mimicked or replicated in any other way. Right. So how, how, why, why does that work over like using a Swiss ball or like, you know, why choose hypotherapy over something else? So it's not just, you know, the horse, but there's also that dynamic environment. And then the riders are, or clients, patients, riders are having so much fun, typically speaking, that they forget that they're there for therapy. They're right. super motivated. And, um, you know, could you imagine trying to give 35 or 3,500 repetitions of a Swiss ball movement in one session? That's no. not physically possible. So it's really unique in that way. It offers the motivation. And then not just that, but I mean, we have our clients do so many different things. I have my clients um, sit forward and steer their horse with two reins. I have them sit sideways. I have them sit backwards. We have them do different vaulting activities. Like um, basically they get in quadruped on the horse or in tall kneel or half kneel or standing or tailor wow. sit. And um, yeah. we can really do all different kinds of stuff. We blow bubbles. We play catch. I spy. Oh. We reach what? for reins. We high five. We walk, halt, you know, walk, trot, all different kinds of velocity transitions. I mean, the possibilities are limitless. And that's really what adds so much value to this. Yeah. It, so it really seems like uh, hippotherapy, and, and you can correct me if I'm wrong, and I'm sure there's way more reasons for it, but it really seems like it helps a lot of postural control and just like keeping like someone who maybe has a uh, like hypotonicity or someone who really does can't really hold themselves up just kind of helps them stay more erect and have a stronger posture kind of thing. Absolutely. I mean, if you think about it, every time the horse moves, our rider is getting anterior, posterior balance perturbations, yes. lateral and a three dimensional kind of rotational. Um, depending on the horse, of course, every horse is a little bit different in the way that they mm. move. And we actually take that into consideration when matching horse and rider, but it's actually wow. funny. Some of my, my clients, you'll see them, they kind of sit, you know, low tone, that, that posterior pelvic tilt and forward head and all that. And the second they get on the horse, they just sit right up. You don't even have to tell them. Whoa. I don't know what it is. I think it puts the pelvis in a good position and just that engagement and that motivation and the amount of input they're getting, it really wakes them up. It's yeah, cool. for sure. And that's amazing because already right off the bat, as soon as they sit down, they're already getting treatment where you don't even have to cue them for anything. They're already like uh, getting promotion in that anterior pelvic tilt and just the better posture. So that's amazing. Well, that's one of the other great things is that as long as you're on a moving horse, you're receiving that treatment, that input. Yeah. It doesn't matter if you're, you know, not able to follow directions as well or not as cognitively aware, like you're there, you're getting the therapy. You don't even necessarily have to be fully participative to get that. Yeah, for sure. So what types of diagnoses or patient demographics do you normally see? We work with all different kinds of diagnosis. I actually, one of the things I really love about it is my youngest client is 18 months. And Whoa. my oldest client is 88 years old. What? So, yeah. <laughs> Which is cool and challenging, but super yeah. cool. Um, so I work with people with cerebral palsy, um, autism spectrum disorder, down mm. syndrome, um, all different kinds of genetic and hereditary um, syndromes. Um, I have a guy with Parkinson's. I have a woman with multiple sclerosis. I'm even seeing some orthopedic um, patients with like anterior listesis and yeah. Anterior. So I mean, as long as they're safe to be on a horse, then yeah. you can participate in hypotherapy. And if you're wow. not safe on a horse, then we'll still have clients come walk around the barn do all different kinds of therapeutic activities, but just using that more engaging environment. Yeah, for sure. That's, that's awesome. It's so cool that you could see like a huge variety of patients. Like I, when we went, I just thought it was mainly for like the younger, you know, kiddos kind of thing. But I mean, 88 years old, and like, and different types of diagnoses is like, it, it's so versatile. I had no idea. Yeah, it is. It truly is. So we even work with, um, the adaptive writing program works with military and PTSD. Mm, wait, t tell me a little bit more about that. Like, what do you mean? So they'll have the, um, the veterans come in and write in a group. It's more adaptive writing than it is hypotherapy because it's not mm. provided by a licensed therapist. It's provided by somebody who's a 
certified therapeutic riding instructor, but they come in and they, they do a group activity and relating to the horses and going through that activity really helps them live in the now because horses are now creatures. They're not worried about what happened yesterday or right. the past. And I mean, forming that relationship with such a large animal and being able to take that control really is helping them a lot. Yeah, for sure. Wow. That's cool. Yeah. Um, so I wanted to ask you, just so uh, other viewers who are watching this can just have a better understanding and a more specific understanding, um, is there a specific example or a case study where you utilize like hippotherapy and uh, whatever their diagnosis is or whatever their impairments are? Like, what are you doing, like maybe right right now, to help help them and treat them? Yeah, so one client that comes to mind that I just adore, we have so much fun together. Um, mm -hmm. I, she started with me new, so she wasn't working with another therapist before me. So I've been seeing her for about four months or 11 sessions, and mm. she's 11, and she has mitochondrial complex one deficiency, which can, yeah. What, <laughs> what is that? Super well versed in as a student, yeah, so of course right. you're always learning, but yes. um, it can affect many different organs and systems, specifically like the nervous system, the heart, and skeletal muscles. Um, common impairments or issues are like epilepsy, intellectual disability, ataxia, dystonia, hypotonia, fatigue, exercise intolerance, mm -hmm. things of that nature. So it's really wide, and of course the presentation is going to vary person to person. Right. But her main impairments basically included ataxia, diminished motor planning, severely impaired coordination, postural control, balance, weakness, and low tone. Um, so because of this, she was unable to descend stairs without supervision. Keep in mind, she's 11, right? Whoa. So you yeah, right. be able to do that super safely and independently at this point. Uh, right. She was falling at school often, which was leading to injuries and Right. She wasn't able to keep up with her peers, like running and jumping and things of that nature. Right. So when I first started treating her, she was so sweet. She was very nervous, required so much encouragement. And she actually started riding with two handles. So she required both handles to be confident and stay upright on her horse. And she wasn't able to stand in tandem, st tandem stance for more than three seconds. And she was completely unable to stand on one leg. So now that I'm seeing her for the four months, she's able to do tandem stance for more than 10 seconds. Yes. She's yes. to be able to stand on one leg. She's at five seconds on each leg. And what really excites me the most is she's just like blossomed. She's so confident now. She doesn't use her handles. Actually, the handles are gone. I took them wow. away. She came in one day and I was like, no more handles today. <laughs> <laughs> She got so mad, but she's so, she's confident. She's like, you know what? I can do that. Okay. Yeah. Like her, her persona has changed. So she sits sideways. She sits backwards. She sits in Taylor sit, which is like crisscross applesauce backwards. Wow. That's crazy with no hands, hands free. She's what? using her reins to steer her horse, which she never could have done if she was on handles. Right. And so you see these riding goals um, translate into functional goals that nice. increased balance, postural control, coordination, and improved motor planning are helping her in her more functional goals, such as stairs, tandem stance, and balance. Right. So, with that said, our sessions usually start with mounted activities and finish on the ground with very functional activities. Gotcha. Wow, it's so cool to see someone with so much uh, deficiencies and limitations and just utilizing hippotherapy to get them to stand, walk, balance a lot more, have more control with their body. And even like doing something crazy, like crisscross applesauce backwards <laughs> on a horse. Like, I, even I can't do that, you know? So, yeah, it, yeah. I mean, and they let us ride on the horses and try the things, sit sideways and sit backwards right. and do all of that stuff. And right. I mean, you kind of think, whoa, this is what I'm having my clients do. They're pretty yeah. good. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, exactly. But there's wow. also, um, if you guys wanted to check out the Shea Center YouTube, there's tons of writer story videos on there. Mm -hmm. There's so many success stories. I'll definitely be linking that in the video down below. So those of you who are watching, make sure you check out the uh, resources and all of that below. So I wanted to ask you, um, you know, if anyone who is interested in getting into uh, hippotherapy, what's, what's life like as a, as a hippotherapist, you know, like, 
Hey guys, really quick, if you're gaining value from this video, please smash that like button so this video can get recommended for people who are interested in this field and different specialties in physical therapy. Like, I, it's such a unique field, like I don't, I don't even know where to start. Yeah, I really, um, I mean, obviously I've been really passionate about this and driven for quite some time, but now dreaming and doing are two totally different things, right? right. Just because you see something from the surface and you think you love it doesn't necessarily mean that when you go to actually doing it, that it's going to be the same. So I'm happy to say that I love it. I eat it up. It's so much fun. It's really exciting and it's super challenging. Um, like I said, I'm seeing all different ages, all different diagnoses, things I never learned about in school. I'm constantly learning and growing. Another thing that I really love about it is people don't get in that field without some serious amount of dedication and passion. Mm. So everyone that I work with is just so supportive and I have so many mentors and, you know, we really work hard as a team to build each other up, which is just right. so important in that field. Yeah. And I get to work outside. <laughs> yeah. I play games. I work with horses. Um, we sing songs and with my adult clients, I mean, we share our love for horses and just have a good time. It doesn't look or feel like therapy, you know? Yeah, um, for sure. Do you so get also, to, oh, go so, ahead, go ahead. I was gonna say it was go also ahead. super cool is I'm actually walking about seven miles a day, Whoa. which I'm up to 140 Jeez. miles a month. Ooh. And I get to ride and work with the horses four days a week. So I love that it's physically challenging and it keeps me moving. Yeah, yeah, that's for, I mean, as physical therapists, we're naturally always walking around, standing, sitting, changing positions all the time. But, you know, utilizing a horse, you're, it's like a, the demand of or activity is just way more and burning more calories. That's, always, that's like a two in one, you know? <laughs> My rings are always full. <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> nice. Um, so, you know, just along the lines of life as a uh, hippotherapist, um, I'm sure now that you've been working for almost a year now, um, I'm sure you've learned and gained some experiences. Um, tell me maybe like one or two or three pros and cons of just this field. Like, you know, obviously you talked about all the great things, which is great, you know, but yeah. you know, every job has its shadow sides. And if you feel vulnerable enough to share, I'd, I'd love to hear that. Of course. So I think I've just gone on and on about the pros. So right. we have some of those established. Um, some of the cons, unfortunately, I would say is that hypotherapy just isn't as well known as other specialties. And because of that, it's not always reimbursed by insurance. So most of our mm. clients are cash pay. They do oftentimes seek reimbursement on their own. Um, also, because of that, the cost of the therapy is just so high that pretty much all hypotherapy centers are nonprofit. With that said, we do have scholarships and, you know, financial assistance for those who need it. But right. also the downside of that is that we're more exposed to economic downturn with the economy, which we've all kind of experienced here lately. For um, sure. We're lucky at the Shea Center that we're very financially stable. So we have been able to remain open and still help our riders. But unfortunately, a lot of hippotherapy centers have really taken a hard hit with the, the current economy. Mm. Um, of course, there's also um, inherent dangers with all horse-related activities, but we have rigorous training and safety precautions in place. And we actually, I feel like it's important to know at the Shea Center, haven't had any employee or rider injuries in years. So, Good, yeah. yeah. There are some downsides, but I mean, there's going to be that with everything, and we work really hard to, to combat those and do right. well. Right, for sure, for sure. Man, That that's like, I mean, you're always like, you know, since there's like another variable as well with not only the patient, like not falling, which is a huge deal. We definitely don't want any falls or injuries, but you're also dealing with the horse too, right? Like this is like something that's so, I mean, I can't imagine like someone who's like so controlling or wants to control the environment as much as possible. It's like, you have this horse that's like, how can you trust this animal or this, this thing to like, just help you out you know that's like crazy like how do you deal with that so well a lot of the all of the horses at the Shea Center are all there because they love their jobs mm. not every horse is fit for this environment I mean right. that's an understatement you know these horses right. are special um, they're rigorously trained they are vetted they're and you know they're all donated for the most part to us 
So, but not only that, but the staff at the Shea Center, they all come with varying experiences with horses, some having a lifetime experience and some having little experience, but we're mm -hmm. all constantly learning. We're provided ample opportunities to expand our horsemanship skills while at work because it's part of our job. And yeah. furthermore, we always work as a team. Um, one thing that I really do love about it is that we're always as a, a therapist one-on-one -on -one with our clients. And not only do we have the client and the horse, but we have one to two volunteer sidewalkers and then nice. a horse leader who is either a volunteer or staff. Mm. And so the sidewalker's job is to walk alongside the horse, as it sounds, and help the client with balance and whatever games or activities they might be doing. And the leader's horse, I'm sorry, the leader's job is to handle the horse. So with that said, the therapist's job, however, is to oversee the entire treatment. We're constantly right. thinking about the therapeutic aspect with the client. We're telling the sidewalkers what to do, seeing how they're handling the client, giving them any constructive criticism if they may need it. And then the same thing with the leaders. We're telling them, you know, we want a little more movement, less movement, walk, halt, do a circle, those kinds of things. And we're right. always watching the horse's behavior. So it's a lot of, a lot of multitasking, but I mean, we just have such fantastic staff and volunteers that it, it comes together. And with experience, yeah. it gets easier. <laughs> it was definitely right. really <laughs> tough during my student rotation. Um, oh my gosh. Easy. Yeah. So, I mean, you, up, you know, they build you up to it. For sure. For sure. That's crazy. That I mean, I didn't even know that you had to even oversee other volunteers too. So that's another thing that you have to keep your eye out for on top of thinking about therapeutic exercise and different types mm -hmm. of things. Mm -hmm. But volunteers, horses, yourself, the patient, like that's way more than I can handle. You could <laughs> do <crazy>. it. <laughs> it might be some practice, but you could do it. Wow. I am, I am uh, much respect for sure. Oh, that's, <laughs> that's, that's crazy. crazy. So um, I know you mentioned that sessions are one-on-one -on -one and with the volunteers and whatnot. Um, how long are each sessions and how often are each patients or clients kind of coming in for treatment? So, because of the amount of team members that go into our sessions, we require people to commit to once a week for each 10 week session. Um, then each session within the week is 45 minutes long. As mm -hmm. I mentioned before, the first 35 minutes are mounted activities and about the last 10 to 15 minutes are functional activities on the ground, which can be balance or running or climbing up guardrails of the stall. I mean, there's all yeah. the crazy fun stuff that we can do. That's also functional like stair training and we have a full pediatric gym inside as well. Wow. So, okay. Nice. 45 so, minutes once per week. Oh, cool. So you're able to utilize the horse and then you put him on the ground and then if needed, then you also have a gym with regular equipment like dumbbells, Swiss, Swiss balls, uh, uh, cables, bands, all that kind of stuff. Boys, plants, the whole nine yards. So nice. it's fantastic because I mean, we just, we can do so much. Yeah. It's funny because like in normal PT clinics, like you have the gym and that's it. But in right. your clinic, the gym is like chump change. That's like the side stuff. <laughs> We're on five acres. Yeah. So we have the full barn, multiple arenas. We can go out on trail rides. So we have two gyms. Yeah. Right. We're very, very blessed. So. Wow. The, so I understand the Shea Center is actually also one of the largest hippotherapy and adaptive riding centers in the United States. So Yeah, yeah, I know. I, I, I remember them saying that. And I remember, I forget the number, but there's not too many locations either, right? Like uh, with like uh, hippotherapy in the United States. I can't speak to that specifically. I um, personally know of about three to four more just here in Southern California. Okay. Um, but no, it's, it's definitely still gaining momentum. And um, most other centers are quite a bit smaller. And yeah. Fewer, fewer, but yeah, I mean, we're, it's growing. It's a growing profession. Wow. There's way more research out there on it. And yes. um, some insurances do reimburse for it now. So yeah. Wow. So for the most part, patients or clients that are coming in are typically paying out of pocket. Yeah. Wow. Most but the cost of each se session is less than what it actually costs us, which is part of the nature of being a nonprofit. So that we mm. heavily on donors to be able for us to subsidize that overall cost. That way it is right. close to being affordable. And then right. for our clients who have financial hardship, we, thanks to our donors, we do have financial aid and funding available for that. Right. That's awesome. Good for you guys. <laughs> it is awesome. It's, it's such a great thing. And I mean, 
I just can't overemphasize how happy of a place it is. Yeah. People love coming there. They forget that they're there for therapy. They're just so stoked, which is like an unfair advantage, right? I mean, how many right. people say, I can't wait to go to physical therapy. <laughs> yes, know? nobody says that. <laughs> yeah, so I mean, it's, it's great for the client. It's great for everybody. And it just makes it a really happy place to be. Yeah, man. Props to Shea Center. I mean, when we went, I remember it was such a positive environment, but just hearing your own words from it, just it makes it seem like such more uh, in, an, an enticing place to go. It really is, yeah. And if you ever yeah. want to come for a ride along, if you're in town, I'd love to take Ooh. you. Throw you, on, throw you on a horse and give you the spiel again, but as you can actually experience it yourself. Yeah, for sure. Maybe we'll do a little part two action in the future. <laughs> Who knows? <laughs> that would be awesome. Yeah, yeah. I love that. <laughs> Um, so I wanted to ask you one last question uh, before we head, head, uh, head off on this interview. So students who may be interested in doing hypotherapy, what's maybe one or two advices, like the top advices that you can think of to either, uh, you know, excite them more or motivate them more to just be a part of this specific profession? So um, for current DPT students who are interested in physical, I'm sorry, hypotherapy, I would really strongly advise, even though we do see children and adults, a lot of what we see is children. And I feel like me personally at a zoo specific, that wasn't covered as in depth as the adult population was. Mm -hmm. So I would strongly recommend doing as much as you can to focus on that. And right. if you have the opportunity to do a pediatric rotation or even hypotherapy rotation, if you could get both, that would be yeah. ideal. But I mean, if, especially if you have the chance to do a hypotherapy rotation, you never know until you ask. I was right. so lucky it fell into my lap. And then that rotation is what got me my job there. So yeah. and just seeking out as much information and mentorship and knowledge that you can get because school is the time to do it. <laughs> yes, for sure. For sure. I would give anything to sit in another lecture. <laughs> <laughs> I never right. thought I could say that. <laughs> <laughs> I do miss school. It's just kind of, you just get to sit and take it in instead of doing the stuff as much as how great it is. Sometimes it, it does wear on you at some time to time. Well, it's great to do it, but then you're constantly, you're always still learning and growing, but you don't have a professor standing there in front of you just dumping that mass amount of knowledge, you know, right. you're having to seek it more independently as a licensed professional. So right. I think that that was definitely just use the resources that you have to the best of your ability. And if you have the definitely. chance, if you don't have horse experience, if you have the chance to be around them, if this is something that you really want to do, then I recommend doing that in any way that you can, because yeah. it's definitely unique. And like I said, dreaming is different than doing. So yes, for sure. Make, before you commit to it that it's what you want and it's where you should be because everybody is geared with a different set of talents and personality traits so yeah it was tough being there as a student having to sing in front of my mentors this is <laughs> fine <laughs> i can sing children's <laughs> songs in front of everybody who's <laughs> you know mentoring me right now so it's wow. definitely interesting but it's a lot of fun <laughs> yeah uh, well thank you so much for your time and thank you so much for your insight um, those of you who are watching here, um, Jen is just so amazing and she's super helpful. Um, Jen, is there any way that any students who might be interested, is there any way that they could contact you? And if they can, uh, what's your contact? Of course, you guys, if you have any questions about anything at all, please feel free to email me. My email address is jwhite, like the color, at shaycenter.org. Perfect. I'll make sure to put that in the description as well. So guys, it's an open invitation. If you have any interest in hypotherapy and merging physical therapy with that as well, please uh, connect with Jen and she can give you way more insights and way more details about this field. But Jen, I just want to thank you for your time and for this unique opportunity and uh, just, this, just this chance to share to the world and advocate for this profession even more. Well, thank you so much for having me on. I love your, your vlogs and everything that you're offering. I think it's really helpful for students in PT school. So thank you for including me in that. Thank you. All right. Well, have a great day. Have a great rest of your 2021. And uh, we'll just uh, hopefully maybe in the future, we'll do a part two of this where maybe I'm in the, in the field. Like, hey, guys, what's <laughs> up? I'm on this horse. <laughs> you're on a horse. That'll be great. Yes, that would be fantastic. <laughs> 
All right. Well, have a great night and thank you for your time. <laughs> All right. Well, hippotherapy, horse therapy, I hope you learned so much from this video. I know I did because when I was in school, I learned a little bit about it. But after interviewing with Jen, now I know the power of what a horse can do and how it can help so many people with different types of diagnoses and illnesses. Guys, I hope this video helped inspire you to look into horse or hippotherapy and maybe you can reach out to Jen. I have her information in the description below to gain more insight to maybe volunteer at that clinic or maybe even get a job. Because networking, as you know, is huge, especially in physical therapy. Thank you guys so much for watching. I can't wait to share more information and more specialties in the world of physical therapy. So please make sure you subscribe so you don't miss a video when that video comes out on the specialty that you're looking for. And don't forget, comment below if you want a specific specialty that you want featured next. Stay lifting, stay aloha. Have a great one, you guys.